You've heard of the great white shark, but have you heard of the great chocolate shark? Dan in. Is that I, how it goes? I, no, 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 no. I think you're doing James Bond. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm too scared to watch Shark Week on Discovery, but I thought I could muster up the strength to cake a shark. Please subscribe to this channel if you have not already. I'm really trying to hit 2 million subscribers by July 21st. Let's get started, but before we do, I just want to announce that today is the first day of registration for Camp Cake. It's going to be live streamed and you're going to bake from the comfort of your kitchen and I will be in my comfortable kitchen. Everyone who signs up for Camp Cake will spend two days baking with me live in a secret Facebook group. I'm going to walk you through two amazing cakes. All of the information is written below, but early bird pricing ends Saturday, June 25th. So please register because I can't wait to bake with you. To make this shark cake that will look like a shark head bursting out of water, I needed 28 pounds of chocolate cake batter. 28 pounds. I split that cake batter into 10 different cake pans. I'll put all the details of what pans I used and how much batter goes into each in the links below or at howtocakeit.com. I remove all of the cakes from their pans and level them with a ruler and serrated knife. We had a hump photo shoot. That's how many humps I had. What you gonna do? What you gonna do with all these humps? Put them on Instagram, yeah. It's time for Sir Squeeze a Lot to come in and help me simple syrup all 10 of my cakes. This was a big job for him. In fact, he needed a refill. Whoa. It was a big day for Sir Squeeze a Lot. Now I'm gonna take my 10 cakes and build three separate cakes, filling the layers with Italian meringue buttercream. The first cake will have three layers and be the bottom of the shark. The second cake will have three layers again and will end up being the middle of the shark. And the third cake will have four layers that will end up really being the nose and mouth of the shark. I chill my cakes because I want the buttercream filling to be nice and firm, which will make my carving job much easier. I am intimidated by sharks and I'm intimidated by shark cakes. So what I did was I began by stacking all three of my cakes on top of each other with no boards, no dowels, just to have a look at all the cake I'm working with. Then I remove my top cake and set it aside and start to slowly carve the bottom and middle cake. I actually can't wait to see the time lapse for this video myself on Facebook because I can't even remember how long it took. Once I'm happy with where the shape is going, I remove my middle cake from my bottom cake because I need to add a board and dowels for support. The reason I added my board after is because I really wasn't sure what size my cake would be after carving it and I needed that board to be as precise as possible. Now that my board and dowels are in place, it's time to move on to adding my third cake and carve it. Once again, I'm gonna save my board and dowels for later and I'm gonna start by carving out the shark's big open mouth out of the top cake. And then I really gotta get his head, well I guess that's not his head, that's his nose, like nice and pointy, right? I gotta be fiercer than that. Ready? Yeah. If you're gonna shark, you gotta shark. I, I need to be the Beyonce of sharks, hold on. <laughs> oh, good luck. Give me a moment. Was that scary? I actually have to cut my board into like a semicircle because you don't want boards sticking out of a shark's mouth. That's just weird, right? That's unexplainable. Maybe it ate a board. Oh yes, like yes. Mouth. I actually felt that my cake wasn't pointy enough. So I resorted to my cake humps. So I took two humps from the smallest cakes, leveled them a little just by eye and added them to the top sandwich with buttercream just to help really get that point like on fleek. Till I'm really happy with the shape of my shark and then I'm going to crumb coat and chill. Okay, can we add like disco sharks under the disco ball? <laughs> what are disco sharks? Like they spin on their fins and they're like boom, boom, boom. How do you know that sharks don't like disco? You don't know. That's true. I guess I should probably watch Shark Week to find out. I always find that once my cake is crumb coated and chilled, it's so much easier for me to see where the shape is at. But once it's nice and white, I can look at it again and think, 
Well, I'll tell you what I thought. I thought to myself, this shark is hungry. This shark like had no belly. It's a shark. So I needed to give my shark a little bit more of a belly and some body down near the bottom. And this is where those cake humps came in handy again. I take my two biggest cake humps and piece them together to make one big cake hump. And then I ice my cake a little and attach them to the front. I actually added one more cake hump right in the middle and then iced the whole cake. It's finally time to make this look like a shark with fondant. The one thing I do know about sharks is that they are gray on their back and white on their belly. So I actually started with 10 pounds of white fondant and dyed half of that a nice deep gray. I'm going to begin by covering the entire back of my shark with the gray fondant. I roll out one piece that is tall enough and wide enough to go halfway around the shark. I actually roll it a little thicker than I normally do, so thicker than one eighth of an inch, because at this weight, it's definitely gonna start to tear on the point of the shark. I work really quickly, making sure my hands are as cool and dry as possible, smoothing that fondant onto my whole whale. and what? that. Shark! Oh, shit. <laughs> I use my hands to smooth the fondant all over the shark. I realized that I really don't want a straight line between the white of the front and the gray on the back. That won't look like a shark looks. So I decide to take my paring knife and just sort of lightly score the pattern and direction that I'm gonna cut my fondant in on either side. And then I use a pastry wheel to cut the fondant. So this way I get sort of like a jagged zigzag that's not too perfect. I'm just still in shock you didn't want a straight line. I did. <laughs> but I didn't wanna, who am I to alter the shark? <laughs> Once I've created a nice edge of gray fondant along the sides, I'm ready to roll out my white fondant for the front of the shark. I'm gonna roll it in two sections, covering from the roof of the shark's mouth up to the nose, and then from the bottom inside his mouth down to his big belly. Again, I use my hands to smooth each section of white fondant and my pastry wheel to cut along the seam. And when I join those two colors together, I just use my thumbs to really blend those seams together in a not perfect line. Put the shark music here. Hold up. We gotta pause on the shark cake for a minute because I forgot to mention that I'm doing a meetup at VidCon with Elise from My Cupcake Addiction. VidCon is in Anaheim, California from June 23rd to 25th. I'll put the details below about our exact meetup time. I hope you guys can come out and meet us. I spent quite a bit of time researching shark gums since Jocelyn couldn't seem to get me a live shark. <laughs> she calls herself a producer. For the inside of the mouth and the gums, I took my leftover white fondant and I dyed it a nice soft pink and a bit of a deeper pink. I'm gonna roll out that soft pink nice and thin just to cover the roof of the shark's mouth. That's the roof of its mouth, right? Yeah. Okay. I used my turkey skinator from my Thanksgiving turkey cake to press into that pink fondant and create texture. So I think I have to change its name to like the shark mouthinator. <laughs> smooth it out, trim it to fit the inside of the mouth, and then I had to make a shark tongue. I created this sort of rounded, pointed tongue that would fill the shark's mouth, and I just set that tongue aside because this shark has no gums. For the gums, I use my darker pink fondant, and I just roll out two tubes that will fit like lips almost. So to create a texture on my tubes, I actually used a cobblestone impression mat, and then I secured those tubes into the mouth of the shark with a little clear piping gel. It's gonna be like, ah, like all wet and he's hungry. That was a good shark impression, right? <laughs> 
It was. I, feel, I already feel that I'm getting much better. I mark out his eyes with the end of a gum paste rolling pin, just press it in so that I can insert his eyeballs later. And then I mark his nostrils with a pointed sculpting tool. To paint my white fondant, I'm using white food coloring. Now for the gray of the shark, I start by mixing a little bit of black food coloring into my white food coloring to get gray. We're looking for an opaque color for this shark. He has no name. I was gonna name him Sharky Poo, but I don't think that's appropriate. So guys, please help me out. Write it below and we will pick a name. Up on the nose of the shark, there is a bit of patching to be done to the gray fondant, so I take a little bit of royal icing and an offset palette knife, and I just sort of scrape it into the crack. Googling shark eyes was one of the scariest things. They have like dead eyes, they have no life in their eyes, I'm sorry, they don't. I'm sorry, I'm not being mean. Don't say that they have a very bad stigma, and they're actually really like the backbone of the of the whole like ecosystem. Can we ocean. leave that in? Well, I really are. want Jocelyn's voice. <laughs> I take a little bit of black fawn in and roll out some eyeballs and insert them into the sockets that I left behind. And then I wanted to make his eyeballs look really dark and shiny. So I used some black food coloring painted very carefully onto each eyeball. After I let all the paint dry on my shark cake, I noticed that where I had patched it at the top of his nose, looked really, really cool. Something about adding the royal icing there added just such a texture and changed the gray color a little bit. And so of course I said to myself, Yolanda, why not do this to the whole cake? And so I did. This shark, you know, he's looking cute. Needs some teeth some dental work. I've been to Shark Dental School, which is also known as Google. I made the shark teeth one by one. I just rolled little balls of gum paste and then actually just sort of shaped it into a teardrop and then sort of flattened it and kept it really nice and pointy. I used a bit of royal icing, thick royal icing, like polydent, and I attached the shark's teeth one by one. I attached two rows on the top of his mouth and two rows on the bottom. As I added the teeth, I kept size in mind. So as I got to sort of the corners of his mouth, I added teeth that were smaller, just so that it would look proper, you know, like a proper shark. Do you know that sharks shed their teeth? They have thousands of teeth in a lifetime. That's why yeah. people find shark teeth. Who needs discovery when you've got how to cake it? I really wanted this shark to look like he had just eaten something. So I'm gonna paint his gums. I actually added some red food coloring to a bit of clear piping gel, and then I dabbed that on all along both gums. Then I added a little more of the same food coloring piping gel mixture to give his mouth a bit more of a bloody look. To finish this shark off, I'm just gonna brush a thin layer of clear piping gel all over his gray back because I want him to look shiny and wet emerging from the water to smile at all of us humans. <laughs> he still has no name. He is looking fabulous and this shark has no name. So please help us out and write a name below because Sharky Poo won't cut it. <laughs> I ate a shark. You know what? I figured there was only one way to eat a shark. Sorry, shark. Listen, I should listen up, sharky poo. If you can give it, you better be able to take it. Oh yeah, I made like a real dent in that shark. <laughs> I cut off half his head. <laughs> they eat humans. They Justin. don't eat humans. Thanks for watching Cake Week on how to cake it. I'm Yolanda Gamp signing off. Please subscribe if you haven't already and beware of shark cakes. Especially chocolate. Yes.